dear pleasure getting to spend time focusing on you this month has truly opened my eyes to a side of myself that i have neglected for way too long i always thought that i needed other people or things to make me feel pleasure and that it could only come through sex but now i see that i am the only person who are able to allow pleasure into my life and that i can allow it into every moment of it i have found the pillars of what i need to feel pleasure what pleasure is to me and how I can infuse more pleasure into my everyday life. After being sexually violated in 2021, I shut down this part of myself, but this month I have felt pleasure like never before. Thank you for this month's lessons, guidance, beauty, trials and tribulations, and for connecting myself closer to my truth. With love, M. can mean so many different things for everyone and it's not just connected to sex i have encapsulated everything that i've learned throughout this month and put together 10 pleasure pillars for you to easier connect to your own pleasure but before we get into this video i wanted to reason why i decided to focus on pleasure this month and i just want to give a little trigger warning because i'm going to talk about sexual violence in 2021 i got sexually violated three times within six months and it completely broke me I've always been a very sexual person, but what I realized at that point was that I was not in control over my own body. I gave it up. I gave my body up to people that I didn't really want to have sex with just because I was longing for a deep connection with other people. I was longing for a sense of comfort, a sense of belonging. At this point, I live in New York, so as you might know, New York is not the most favorable place to live to feel intimate and to have intimacy because everything is happening so fast and you have so many different choices and you never really feel like you are picked. So I went to sex. I knew that I was good and I knew that it was a way for me to feel really close and feel wanted and desired. But when I was sexually violated three times, I was like, what is happening? I cannot continue living like this. I am constantly pushing my limits and constantly pushing my ba own boundaries. And I didn't even know what my boundaries were. It made me realize that something had to change. I was really starting to hate myself and hating my body because of how I wasn't taking charge over her and therefore wasn't treating her well. After this happened, I went on a deep spiritual healing journey, but my sexuality kind of got put on hold. My body had completely shut down and it started tensing up when I am having sex and being penetrated. I, it hurts. My body's like, this is dangerous. This is not safe for you. So we're gonna shut down. And that's why like for the past three years, I have had mostly pain whenever I've had sex with someone. I've also struggled with feeling pleasure because I have been so much up in my head thinking not really being able to connect to the present moment as well as putting my pleasure into other people's hand, expecting other people to make me feel pleasure. Even though you literally cannot put your own anything into other people's hands because you're the only one that is control over how you wanna feel. It has therefore been up to other people to make me feel good and I am over it. I am ready to take charge and have been doing that this whole month. So this is why I created this video to find out what pleasure means to me and to take matters into my own hands and connecting back to my truths through pleasure and sexuality. I hope this inspires you to stop and smell the roses more often and start taking charge over creating more pleasure in your own life because you are worthy of living a life full of joy, juiciness, and turn on. One of the biggest aspects when it comes to feeling pleasure is feeling safe safety in our bodies, safety with people around us, just being able to relax. Because if our nervous system is on, if it's 
blinking if it's like oh danger danger and our fight or flight mode is activated we cannot for the life of us be in our body i know for a lot of people when they have gone through traumas they disassociate from their bodies and with me that's what i did i i struggled to feel like i was safe within myself so i wanted to ask you three questions around this for you to dive deeper into how you can feel more safe and if you feel safe in your body the first thing is how can you create safety within yourself how can you feel comfortable within your own body? Some of the things that I have found has really helped me is knowing what I want, knowing what I don't want, knowing what I like, knowing what I don't like. Shaking, if you for example take or look at a an elephant or a zebra that has just been attacked or run after, they shake off. They shake off all that stagnant like fear that's in the body. Another way that I have felt more comfortable and more safe in my own body is to touch myself, to feel pleasure through actually being, being with my body. Self-pleasure or, or just literally just stroking yourself. And another thing that is really important is self-love. How are you speaking to yourself? How are you making your body feel? Because if you constantly think that you know, I'm not worthy of feeling pleasure. I'm not worthy of being in a safe, loving relationship. You will constantly attract that thing because you don't think you're worthy of having anything else, anything better, anything that is actually what you truly desire. And the last thing within creating safety within yourself is think about your drinking habits. I myself have completely stopped drinking. I am sober, at least for now. I have had a really, really turbulent relationship with drinking and a lot of these things that has happened to me has happened while I was drunk. While I didn't feel safe to stand up for myself, to be in my own sovereignty, my own power. So I'm not saying that you should need to stop drinking, but just be aware of your drinking habits if you are going out, if you're doing something where you feel like maybe it's not the safest environment. And now let's move on to how you can, um, or what measures you can take in order to feel safe. You can find safe spaces for you to explore these parts of yourself, explore pleasure, find communities, find spaces where people are open and spaces where people have the best intention. Because yeah, if you start like self-pleasuring yourself in the middle of the street, you're probably gonna not be welcomed in that way. So finding safe spaces where you do feel like you can express all of your most pleasurable self. I love to bring some Thing to cover myself up with if I dress a little skimpy out on the street just for me because I know that people out there don't have the best intentions not everyone is living from love and light and I get that we live in a society where people have their own traumas that they're still dealing with and that is creating their behaviors but actually bringing something to cover yourself up with if you are you know going home from a party just bring something a shirt an oversized shirt a cape i'm gonna put in some inserts of what i have worn that has made me feel so much more confident and comfortable when i'm alone or when i leave early in the evening the next thing with how you can create safety around you is well this kind of goes into um, how you can feel safe within yourself, but being physically strong, being physically fit, being able to, you know, stand up for yourself physically if something were to happen. Uh, we're crossing our fingers that, you know, we will be safe, but being able to be in your own power and feel powerful, that requires most of the time you actually feeling strong as well. And maybe learning some tricks, you know, if a, a person comes up to you and tries to touch you, knowing how to like, I think it's the foot first, elbow, turn around, knees and crotch, and then fingers and eyes, something like that. There's like a, a thing if someone comes behind you and tries to grab you. Look some, some of this stuff up and just 
make yourself feel like you're able to stand your own ground. One of the things that I have been loving lately is finding anchor people. So whenever you're out, whenever you are going to a function, whenever you are doing something that you know is fun and pleasurable and juicy and joyful, find people that you feel safe with. Find people that if anything happens, if you know you feel uncomfortable at any moment, you can go back to them and then you can actually exhale and your nervous system is gonna feel safe with them. And that might be a person that you've just met, but you just feel like this is, there's a deeper connection here or you just feel safe with them. Or it might be a friend that you came with and just opening up the communication. I think communication is just key in everything, but also in you feeling safe. Letting people know like, hey, I don't feel safe with that person. Let's just be mindful and maybe not be around them. And then a, a last question, I might you to just sit and dabble with it, just see what comes up. Why do you not feel safe feeling pleasure? And what do you desire to uh, experience, but you don't feel safe with and around? It's interesting what will come up when you start ta uh, thinking about safety and what makes you safe and comfort and safety are two different things comfort is your comfort zone what you're used to and going out of your comfort zone is not the same as not feeling safe i think it's very important to distinct those because I love going out of my comfort zone but I still want to feel safe. I want my nervous system to be relaxed and sometimes yeah when you go out of your comfort zone you might feel a little unsafe because it's new, it's exciting, it's you know something that you haven't experienced before but you don't want to be un like unsafe in a place where you feel unsafe. Like listen to your intuition, listen to yourself, your body because it will know. <laughs> Another one of the pillars are presence. Being fully, completely here. I think sometimes we are way back in the past thinking about, oh, I should have done that, I should have done this, or living in the future being like, oh my God, I'm so excited for this to happen. But we forget to live in this very moment. And if we don't, if we aren't connected to what is happening right here, right now, pleasure is not going to be as easy to feel. So actually feeling present and using some of these other pillars in order to come back to your presence, you will feel the most amazing you've ever felt. And even during sex, if we're not actually right here, right now with our partner, our mind is wandering off somewhere else. And I know for me, I have definitely been so much up in my head in the past because I've struggled to be fully present. I've struggled to feel safe in my body. I've struggled to actually be able to feel what is happening right here, right now. So some of the ways that I love being more present and working on becoming more present is dancing, being in my body, dropping into my body. Being in nature, you will find so much magic and so many incredible things by literally just looking around. Having conversations with people that you truly, truly adore and truly love and going deep, being fully here, listening to what that person has to say and being able to be there and respond. Practice. Like, being present is not a one-time thing. You're not gonna be like, okay, now I'm present and that's it. Because we live in a world where we are so freaking distracted and, you know, there are always gonna be things, our phones especially. Like, try to put your phone away. Try to turn it off and leave it off for a while and you will notice how much more interesting and pleasurable your life can become. Another one of the pillars are using your senses. That means taste, touch, smell, and then you're here tapping into all your five senses even like using energy as a way of feeling pleasure is one of the ways that I have been tapping more and more into my own pleasure. Being able to feel every single stroke on your body, being able to be witnessing the sound of the birds chirping and singing on a summer's day, being able to smell and taste, being able to feel a soft little doggy. 
being able to taste and feel the sensations of having a strawberry in your mouth like just being able to take all of it in looking at how the strawberry is actually made like that is created out of the earth and you can find pleasure from like the smallest things just by tapping into all your senses it also makes you feel even more present another one of the pillars that are crucial in order for us to feel pleasure is to breathe and i know you might be like emma but i breathe you know it's a normal thing everyone does otherwise we would not be here yes we do but i truly think that we are not breathing properly we breathe so much from up here and we breathe so much from like <sighs> this fight or flight mode and we truly need to start breathing fully deep into our bellies. Breath is an anchor and it's something that we can always tap into and even like during sex I know sex is not all what is pleasure but that is a great example and I know for me I have struggled to breathe properly and you see in porn and you see in all these things like they breathe like <laughs> and that's not gonna give you more pleasure your body's gonna be tense it's gonna feel like you're not safe because when you're not safe your breath starts to get shallow and you start breathing um, faster and you maybe hold your breath but to signalize to your body that your body is safe and you're doing okay and it's not anything dangerous we need to breathe properly all the way down fully in And even exhaling longer you can also do breath work that has been a great way for me to teach my body how to breathe properly and in order to actually feel like I'm more connected to my breath because I'm consciously sitting and working with my breath each and every day so whenever you are feeling unsafe or you are feeling something pleasurable but you feel like oh, this is ah, <laughs> if it's weird or if it's you know whatever it is breathe Simply just breathe. Another one of the pillars are to infuse more beauty into your everyday life. Beauty is, I feel like very misunderstood. To me, beauty is anything that has a calm, just serene presence. So I love to call you beautiful, authentic beings. And for me, that means just, a way of being beautiful can just can be a flower that is just blossoming that has drops of water on it it can be an interaction uh, between a grandma and her grandchild that can be very beautiful it can be love the love between two people it can be a meeting of a, a new being for the first time it can be petting your dog like their beauty is so much but we have constricted it to only looking beautiful and there are so many ways of bringing more beauty into your life and how that can create more pleasure and one of the ways i love doing is to adorn myself is to take time to do my makeup take time to really just infuse myself and not thinking that this makes me better then I would have been without the makeup or without the gemstones or the outfit or whatever it is but just being like wow I am adding something to me already being perfect another way that I love doing uh, beauty is through photo shoots I love and hate the modeling industry but mostly love I love the way that you can feel so motherfucking powerful by showing up in your truth, having a mo moment with the camera and capturing the essence of the person in front of the camera. I also have done uh, numerous photo shoots of me in lingerie 
which really is vulnerable but it's also beautiful and makes me feel so freaking sexy it doesn't necessarily have to like be sent to anyone it doesn't have to be a photo shoot for anyone else but yourself and that's kind of like what i love about it i share it online and i will add some of the photos that i took here because i want to inspire you to do the same i want to inspire you to step out of that comfort zone and just be like oh but my stomach is a little bit you know has a little bit extra weight or i don't like my thighs or i don't like my arms but Doing a photo shoot with a self timer, I love using Lens Buddy. I will link the link down below and just put that on and just be. Don't even think about having the camera there. And whenever you look at the photos again, try not to be critical about them. Try to look for the things that are beautiful. Maybe your energy is just like, wow, I can really see that I am enjoying myself right here. So try to look for the beauty of what is instead of looking at what you wish wasn't. There's beauty literally everywhere. We forget to look for it. Once you start opening your eyes, once you start just noticing the small things, I'm looking at like beautiful drops of water on a leaf and that's oh so good. I'm seeing a little strawberry, what are those called? Again, the tiny ones, the tiny strawberry. That's just like bright red amongst all the green and they're like hidden. So that's also like a treasure. So you can like go around looking for treasures. Like you can create so much beauty in your life if you're actually looking for it. So same with magic. Work on infusing beauty into everything that you do. There are so many different ways. There are so many different kinds of beauty. Figure out what beauty means to you. This one doesn't really need an explanation, but go slow. Take your time with it. In a world where we're just rushing all the time, like for example, right now I'm rushing to get to the event that I'm hosting, but to take time to just sit down and be present. Again, presence is just a big thing. Taking time, slowing down, and really be. Another pillar that I wanna talk about is that there is no light without the shadow. And we are not able to live a fully pleasurable life unless we feel our heavy emotions, unless we feel what is quote unquote negative. Everything in life is a polarity and I think it's so easy to only want to bypass the heavier emotions, but we're humans. We're supposed to feel sad and angry and frustrated and anxious, but it's how you alchemize them, how you take all of these emotions and let them move through you. My mentor, Yusufina, she also talks about kinky shadow work and it's been a very fun way of looking at my shadows in a more kinky, like fun, exciting way. I'm not gonna go into it because that's, you know, her thing, but if you wanna learn more about it, I will definitely link Isafina's uh, Instagram down below. She's starting a 12 week program for that bitch academy, that's what it's called, and she's the boss. Literally, she's so inspiring, and I highly recommend you checking her out. So much pleasure into my life is using my voice. This can literally come in any any sort of way but first of all speaking up your desires, knowing what your boundaries are and stating them will create a lot more safety around um, the pleasures that you desire to have and also just making noise like whenever you're enjoying a meal actually you know like mm, Using your voice in order to create more pleasure around something. It can also be singing. I have loved to sing and it truly just brings me so much joy. Also creating art through your words. I have started doing slam poetry and I absolutely love it. I think it's such a great way for you to kind of turn things that you've been through into something pleasurable. You 
also bring more joy into your life as a way of creating pleasure. And I think this has been, you know, looked upon weirdly bringing in your inner child in order to feel more pleasure. But the thing is, little kids, they feel the most pleasure because they literally just like do whatever feels good to them in that moment. So where are the things that you feel good in, where are the things that make you feel joy and be around the people that just makes you laugh. Laughter is also so pleasurable and just don't take life so seriously. We often are told when we grow up, now we gotta be serious and there is a lot of responsibility compared to when you're a little kid but you gotta keep the joy, you gotta keep the lightness, the the joyful essence of still being a kid even though you're growing up. The last pillar of pleasure that I want to talk about is owning your motherfucking pleasure. I think it's so easy to feel like what you desire, what you want, what you want to experience and how you feel pleasure has been looked at as something that's taboo and wanting to feel pleasure in your everyday is a bad thing and how can you make it into a game? How can you literally just try to infuse more and more pleasure into your life and see where you can top yourself? Um, people will think it's weird, people will think it's too much. My dad wasn't a big fan of my photo shoot uh, that I did, which, hey, I get it. It's very out there, it's not for everyone, but it's pleasurable to me. Just because someone thinks it's too much or you're having too much pleasure in your life and you're like vulgar if they think that, that's on them, that's not on you. Hi, Emma from the future here. Yes, I have pink hair now, but I also just wanted to say that there is a time and a place for where you do this. Like, maybe not go to a family function where you know people are not comfortable with it. Dress in lingerie. So, use your head while you're at it. And one thing that I've realized around fashion, like wearing what makes me feel pleasurable, wearing what makes me feel hot, people are gonna stare. But let them stare. Who cares? You know, people have their urges. I think I talked a little bit about this earlier, but it's gonna happen, so might as well wear it anyways and have people stare at you. I'm sitting here at my show and just, you know, in a bush <laughs> filming myself. I'll let them stare. I know it's definitely a learning curve and even owning it, it's like it will take time for you to get to a level where you're really comfortable owning it and infusing pleasure into your life no matter where you are, no matter who you're around. One thing you can also think about is to connect with the dark feminine. The dark feminine is unapologetic about her pleasure. She does not give any fucks about what people think about if she is too much. She just literally is who she is. She alchemizes the dark in order to make the most ecstatic life that she can possibly have. And that is all for this month's video all about pleasure and feeling good and being connected to our own bodies. I wanted to just end this video with talking a little bit about my experience on what it's been like connecting back to my pleasure and a few tips on how you can connect back to your own pleasure. I gotta be honest, it has been an interesting journey. It's not like I am fully living my most pleasurable life quite yet because it's only been a month <laughs> and I think this is a journey like all of these videos that I'm making it's a journey of constant coming back to ourselves, changing our relationship with it. But I can say that I have never felt this much in my body like I have ever before. I feel sexy, I feel good, and I feel more connected to the people around me and less afraid, less afraid of being taken advantage of, less afraid of feeling like my body is the only thing that has value because I am starting to accept that yes, my body is a fire 
<laughs> and I get it, you know, like people, especially men, they might look at me and just be like, okay, she's got a gorgeous body and that's the first thing they see. And it's important for me to not demonize people in general just because they look at me and they think nice body. So that has been a really interesting during my salsa dancing oh my god like i am starting to actually break down a wall this wall i put up over all of the past experience and i came up with this analogy that i am slowly but surely breaking down the wall and i'm putting up a mosquito net and you may be like emma a mosquito net <laughs> what are you talking about okay so what my analogy around the mosquito net was is that if you have a wall up, nothing gets let in. Absolutely nothing. It's literally just a wall and you can't walk through walls, except for energy, of course, but um, that's another story. But with the mosquito net, you're still letting in the beautiful fragrances around you. You're still listening to the bird sounds. You're still getting that light from the sun caressing your skin, but you get to keep away the mosquitoes. You get to keep away the flies the little insects, the little things that you don't want into your field. And what's so great about a mosquito net is that you can take it off. You can remove it. With a wall, it's harder because it's so stagnant, but with a mosquito net, you know, you could just remove it from the window and then let the things in that you want to let in and you get to be in control. You don't have to do stuff just because you're afraid of hurting someone else. You are the one that is in charge and you get to choose to feel pleasure in your life. And yes, there are gonna be circumstances that we cannot control, but what we do after those circumstances and what we choose to learn and to grow and to hold ourselves and heal ourselves, that is what we can control. Just a little tip from me, just start exploring. Start maybe using some of these pillars and you don't have to do all of them, of course, but maybe start with safety. Start with being able to feel safe in your body, connecting to your breath, connecting to this present moment. And when you start this journey, I would love to hear more from you, what it's like, what you're discovering about yourself, what uh, you find pleasurable. Because like I, I said, like it's so different from person to person and what is pleasure to me will maybe not be pleasurable to you like having a photo shoot in my underwear i fucking love that but that might not be for you so i would love to know either dm me on instagram or comment down below if you decide to start looking more into your pleasure and you decide to maybe do a month of pleasure yourself. Thank you so, so much for watching this month's video. I am loving the way that these formats are just like shifting and I'm figuring out what I like more and more. And it has been truly a joy to create this video and to go on this journey and this path of creating the most pleasurable life that I can imagine because we're all worthy of feeling pleasure we're all worthy of enjoying our lives and not feeling like our lives are just meh like that's not a life to live i want to live in a juicy tender magnetic ecstatic life I would love it if you have come this far to comment a fire emoji down in the comments just so that I know that you have watched this whole video and I'm so freaking grateful for you. For the people who just watched one minute or the people that watched the whole video, I cannot thank you enough for being here, supporting me, and I hope you get some uh, something out of this video. I also have a video about nature that I made last month that I will link down below and next month's theme is all about money. Yay! I'm so excited, so nervous because it's such a taboo topic that just like talking about money is oh, making me uncomfortable but that's that's the growth. That's where we actually expand and create the dream life that we know we are meant to live. Thank you again so, 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 so much for watching. Give this video a like if you liked it. 
comment, you know, the fire emoji. And I would love it if you subscribed and became a part of the beautiful, authentic beings. That's what I call you, my beautiful community members. And I'm so excited to have you! I love you, love you, love you, love you. And I will talk to you next month. Also, check me out on Instagram if you want some daily updates on how all these challenges are going.